Hello my friends, today I'm going to show you how to create a chrome text effect in Affinity Photo, a topic that was suggested by Gosh. Thank you for that. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. That is super important. Thank you and let's get started. So you can see here we have already a chrome font, let's hide that and create a new text layer whoop like that let's write chrome in here like this uh, make it maybe a little bit bigger okay good so you can see this is just a normal flat font nothing special about it and the main way to do a chrome effect in affinity photo is to use the 3d layer effect and the bevel emboss layer effect together where can you find them very easy you select your text layer and then go to the effect tabs over here and there you can see you have a long list and two of them one of them says 3d the other one says bevel emboss if you can't see the effects tab no problem you go to view and then to studio and then here you see effect make sure there's a hook next to it if not just click to make that hook Okay, good. So first of all, we want to click on the little field next to 3D, so to activate it. But then we need to click over here on the little cogwheel. This will give us a pop-up window. And this is important because as you can see here, there's a lot more settings in there. The first one you see up here is called radius. And this will influence how deep the effect goes into our font. And the numbers I'm using are specific to the resolution of my canvas and the size of the text. So don't go to the point by the settings, experiment with them because you can create hundreds of different Chrome looks as you will see in a second. The next one, the softness makes uh, the effect softer or sharper, which we can't see right now. Uh, but I would let it at zero pixels at the moment like you say play around with your own settings the next one the profile this is one that is really important because when you click in here you can see that this gives you a curve and with the curve you can decide and basically design the uh, shape of the surface of your font the 3d surface okay so you can click in here and there are some predefined um, curves that you can choose from but of course you can also go in here and simply create your own design and as you can see and when you click you can also add more points you can make really abstract things for example I would say this looks a little bit more like middle ages kind of thing and you can do it more or sci-fi and all these kind of different styles um, that you want to have here and you can see also if I push this up here a uh, part of the font starts to get flat so um, you can do some really interesting cool designs in here I will leave mine here about here that looks good okay cool good so the next one are about the quality of the light and I want to point this out right now you can add in 3d and for this effect you even have to do that at multiple light sources but these settings here the diffuse the specular and the shininess they are universal for all the light sources you cannot adjust them individually it's important to understand so not to mess up your settings afterwards so I'm um, here I will go with these settings 30 100 and 100 like that and already you can see starts to look pretty much like chrome so that's a good start good the ambient light is basically the light that comes from the surrounding and this uh, you can imagine like um, being in a completely dark room or being in a very bright room so if you set this up to very high you can see that also the font goes very um, bright and kind of blown out with the light so I will set this to zero because um, I don't want to have any ambient light. I want to add my own light sources to create my own effect. Good. So below that we have the light sources. It starts of course with one light source and then you can add and remove light sources with these buttons. And 
The only settings that are specific to the individual light sources are the direction and the color. And next to it, it says azimuth and elevation. And this basically only means the direction and the degree the light comes from. And you have this little circle here, which should simulate a ball. And with that ball, if you move around that little white um, point on top of it, it gives you different directions from which the light can come in your design. So you should play around with those. This gives you very uh, interesting and creative options to do that. And if you want the light not to be as bright, you can go into the color and set it up. So right now it's white. And if you set it to black, of course, there is no light at all. So this means with the color, you can also dim the strength of the light because there is no uh, extra setting for the brightness of the light at the moment. Okay, good. So let's set this up and I want really to invite you to play around. One thing I want to suggest, and this can make the font really more interesting and also add some funky effects if you want to, is um, to add one of the light sources which has some color in it. Um, specifically color that comes from the surrounding. So in this case, I would say I want to have like a darker um, blue in here for my sky in the background. And I can use this to give a little bit of the impression that I have some light coming from the surrounding um, and reflecting a little bit the surrounding in my font. But to come to the funky part, which I uh, talked about is when you make this brighter, like that and you set it for example coming from below you can have a little effect like from the starcraft and world of warcraft in these kind of games which is more like this kind of epic um fantasy kind of light or even sci-fi light so you can do some cool things with that as you can see so really um take the freedom to play around with that and create your very own chrome looks um, okay, so let's make this darker again, like that. Okay, that is okay, good. So now we add some more light sources. I will dim them a little bit, so make this medium gray, um, move it around just so I have more options to set my highlights and, well, bring different forms of shininess um, to, my, to my font. So you can play around and see what do you like? Where should the light come from? What kind of areas of the font should be brighter or darker? Uh, let's see. Hmm, this, this looks good. Okay, let's add another one. I want to make this even darker. And like I said, use as many light sources and light directions as you want to really play around with it and see uh, what looks good to you because this is a very individual thing. Okay, let's go like that. Good. Okay, so this already looks kind of okay, but I still want to have my emboss and uh, bevel effect. So let's click on that, activate that. And the first thing you want to do is, uh, because there is different kind of um, settings, how this effect can play out. And if you have this kind of pillow effect, it, um, it looks like it's pressed, the font is pressed into a soft surface. So this is not what we want. We want to have inner, so it says inside of our font. And again, we can play around um, with the radius. Let's see. And you can see this adds kind of a different additional highlight to the font, which I think looks pretty cool and makes it a, a lot more believable. You can also play with the softness. Let's set it up like this. And the profile again here is pretty important. As you can see, bam, this gives it a completely um, different style and look to it. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's keep that. And again, you can play around with where your light should come from. Mm. Let's see. Let's do it like that. Mm. Yeah, I think I think that's good. I think that looks cool. That looks pretty chrome to me. So there you have it. Um, 
the Chrome font, how to create it, play around with it, be creative with that. And by the way, if you find a good setting for that, maybe save it as an Affinity Photo file because afterwards you can copy the effect to other files. And the way you do that is you go to your layer that you have set up before. Um, so you open the Affinity Photo file with the text and with the settings to that text layer. And then you simply right click on that layer and go to copy and then go to the other Affinity Photo file, select your text layer and go to edit, paste and paste the FX. So the effects for that layer so we can apply it to another effect. And in this way, you can basically save Chrome effects that you have created before. Okay, that was the video. Have a lot of fun with that. Thank you for watching. And if you have a nice idea for a topic, please suggest it in the comments. Bye.